small car weighs one ton. Now imagine that car idle and useless on the side of the street. Multiply that 14 million times and that's all the piles of clothing in the landfills. This number comes from a research study conducted in 2018 alone, focusing on the landfills of the United States. Now, we all live on the same planet. If we can just make tiny altercations to our definition of fashion outside of the fast fashion industry, this may be changed. This is something that we're going to dive into while discussing the environmental impact and benefits of secondhand clothing. After researching the socioeconomic impact as well as the environmental impact, there is direct correlation between these issues and the business model surrounding fast fashion. While the fast fashion industry has overtaken westernized countries with a affordable appeal for new items, it's significant to decrease demand for the betterment of the environment and economical social issues within smaller population sizes. Anyone uh, has the capacity to reach out a helping hand by donating clothing and thus putting it back into the economy. This small step can lead to more accessible options for prices below the retail market that is designed by these major corporations. In 2020, researchers discussed methods of operation that could decrease carbon emissions, cut water waste, decrease the energy being used um, by these major manufacturers. However, this isn't really going to make a difference unless it's at the speed of urgency required and there's accountability taken at the local level, meaning you and I. How we define fashion and our personal expression does not need to be defined by the trends designed and pushed out by these fast fashion trends and brands. Fast fashion methods must be ratified in order for substantial change to be made. As defined by Earth.org, it's a business model that is a streamlined system involving rapid design, production, distribution, and marketing. This allows retailers to pool smaller quantities of greater product variety and allow consumers to get more fashion and product differentiation at a lower price. Now, this definition highlights the methods that the industry fails to consider within the environment. Now that we have a clear understanding of how the fast fashion business model is defined, let's discuss what we can do as a collective. If everyone in this class collectively supported secondhand businesses instead of fast fashion retailers, the amount of landfill waste relating to textiles would decrease. Over half of the average closet is filled with clothing that is not fully utilized. This comes from a report by the World Resources Institute. We've all made impulsive purchases. However, how conscious are we of the impact that we have leaving these stores or after filling up our carts? While there may be a few more steps to getting that uh, excess clothing out of the house, the benefits of bringing it to a donation drop-off can bring more options at better prices and cut the pollutants that we contribute as consumers. Personally, I grew up in what has been considered a low income circumstance and didn't see this correlation until I became more fiscally aware of the downfalls that fast fashion retailers turn a blind eye towards. I always choose thrift stores now over a mall and with the initial thought of saving money for my next textbook. While I can save more of my earned income and shop happily, I know that the environment of the planet and the economy benefits from these steps that I take as an individual. Fast fashion is a lucrative market and the production methods are too convenient, one may argue. How can a consumer pass it up? What if they want their clothing to be new and affordable? Ultimately, the one benefiting from this objection is the producers and retailers of these companies. 715 gallons of water is required to produce one cotton t-shirt. This comes from the World Wildlife Organization. And with that in mind, you start to consider maybe there's already a t-shirt in a different store at a lower price that I can get instead of this new one for $20, $30. Okay, well, maybe you can refute that by saying that there's already major brands that are going into the steps of eco-friendly you know, consciousness. 
You could also say that, what are they really doing? While these major companies are leading an example for those, for others to follow, they fail to pertain to people with a long-term solution. Simply having a bin outside of an H&M store location and telling people to donate their clothing there so the company can write it off as a tax deduction isn't really sustainable. It can look mended for a short amount of time, but it's similar to pitting a Band-Aid on a wound that requires surgery. It's not really going to fix anything except for the exterior appeal. I recognize that this cannot be done at an individual level, especially just from a consumer standpoint. We're not going to be able to change the entire world, but we can change the path that the world is on. While on the surface it has its appeal, it's important to understand that the industry model is not sustainable for the world that we inhabit. Overall, people are going to have a better outlook on life while they actively participate in one's community through secondhand operations. Consumers can redirect their attention to buying clothing at thrift stores and participating with their communities at a tangible scale. But if that isn't enough for consumers to be won over to go into a thrift store, maybe the aesthetic of caring for the planet is. Because if we can't enjoy the beauty around us, then how are we to, you know preserve it in ways that can grow in popularity. This topic relates to this class as the term thrifting increases with younger consumers. The consumer who understands the repercussions of supporting one retailer over another and the inherent benefits that the group will have through such adjustments. This is a call to action and asking you to reconsider where that next outfit may be purchased. The fast fashion methods won't be changed anytime soon, but by having more consumers take a mindful approach to how their money is spent, there may be motivation for these companies to take steps towards more eco-friendly methods. While these consumers engage with local levels of businesses and secondhand distribu uh, distributions, physical environments as well as social environments benefit through such action. And this is something to consider as we debate donating that next t-shirt or purchasing that next t-shirt. What store will you go into? Thank you for listening.